Welcome back to another project video. And because this video is airing on Sunday, Sunday is our project video day, so all should be well. All right, we will be back in a minute with a porcelain repair and repainting video. So, see you in a minute. So the piece that we are working on today is a sort of sad tragedy. This is a rose medallion teacup. The very sweet little teacup. Notice there is no marking on the bottom. Now, no markings on Asian porcelain doesn't always mean anything. Some pieces were not designed for the export market. They might not have uh, the marks, but in this case, this one was. No marking means pre-1880. Um, definitely. Well, actually, pre-1890. My apologies. Pre-1890. So, this is an old piece. This was in the schoolhouse. This was damaged. So what we are doing here is we are repairing a piece of antique porcelain. It's just, mm, that was painful, but it happened. And here is a little friend for it. This is, uh, this is the, a saucer. It's not the saucer that goes with this one, because this one, as you can see, is marked China. So this one is between 1890 in 1919 so 100 years old what we're looking at here is two pieces of antique porcelain both of which were damaged when the roof fell down in the schoolhouse there I have pieces out there that are literally in pieces that um, I just I don't even think they can be glued back together again it's just unfortunate and we have yet a third piece this is a piece of mid-century Japanese porcelain. And by the way, I'm going to show you close-up pictures of all of these because the damage on these pieces is very small. And the first thing we are going to work on is this one. This is the oldest of the bunch. And as you will see, there is a little p-shaped divot just taken out of this uh, oops now there are some other scratches on this piece and I'll show you pictures of that too but I'm not going to do anything about that they uh, it looks like something got raked across the side of this um, probably just enough force to take off a little bit of the paint and shoot it out of the way because there's no other damage. There are, there are no cracks, there are no breaks on this, no other damage. So this piece right here is the one we're going to work on. And we are going right back to what we did yesterday, which is puppy paint. Now, one of the reasons that we're going to use puppy paint is because I want to blend in with some pinks. That white spot is in the middle of an area that ought to be pink, so it's sort of showing up rather conspicuously as not pink. Now, we have pink here. And once again, oh, actually, I can probably just do this I've put a drop of pink paint in the middle of my little non-pink area brush a little bit of water and now 
I'm going to thin that pink out and just sort of smooth it around. Um, I've got plenty of water because, as I say, I want to thin the paint out too. Um, that pink is, it's the right shade, but it's just a lot darker than what I need. So by adding a little water, I'm letting the white area in be, uh, behind this piece show through, which is going to create our nice sort of pale pink. As I say, same shade, it's just a lot lighter, less saturated. And I'm very happy with that. So, all right, no, stay put. There we go. All right, camera, I'm going to take a picture for you. Okay. Now this is just, it's just going to dry at this point. And all I am looking to do with that piece is just replace the white with a nice little bit of pink so that it doesn't scream, oh my goodness, look at this white spot. Now, when that dries, we're going to do something else to it. Meantime, we have this piece, and this piece has a little chip, ah, there we are, yep, on the rim. Very, very tiny, tiny chip, but it is noticeable because the rim is painted. So what we're doing with that is, once again, just a little bit of paint. because all we want to do is get rid of the white. Okay, and that was a quick, easy one because it was a very, very tiny bit. Now let's snap a picture of that if I can remember where, there it is. Right there. So even though there was a little chip out of that, it's very tiny. Now, these two pieces, our cup and our saucer, when they are done, I am going to turn them into a little cup and saucer tidbit tray. The ones that, that hold the, you know, the sugar and the creamer or the sugar and the lemon, or in my case, the ones in the bathroom that hold stuff that I'm sure you'll recall used to be held by a little plastic soy sauce cup from a Chinese takeout. That's what's going to happen with these because they're beautiful pieces and they're damaged. So I am reclaiming them as best I can. This is not a piece I want to go into a China service where it's going to have to be washed and, you know, cleaned and, and whatever because I've got the paint on it. And although the paint is going to be good enough for a nice superficial cleaning, it's really not going to hold up to the kind of hard handling that a teacup gets. So, I need to do something else with this piece. I need to get it into, um, into a situation where it's not going to be as heavily used. And as a little, you know, tidbit piece with a little handle, so you can pick it up by the handle and won't have to use the cup so much, I think I can give that piece a new lease on life. Uh, 1880s teacup. Oh, ouch, that hurts. 
because ordinarily that could just go right in with my China service. In fact, in all likelihood, that came out of my China service. I'm going to have to go do a count and see if that's one of the pieces from my service and see if I have to replace it. Uh, the other plates I'm not so sure about. Um, again, when the work on the schoolhouse is done, I'm definitely going to need to do a bit of an inventory and see if these are pieces that belong somewhere else. But in the meantime, I'm going to make sure I get some use out of it. This next one is a porcelain repair piece. I got this cup along with some other pieces of Japanese porcelain in this particular pattern in order to make little tidbit trays from them. And I didn't notice that the cup was damaged. I probably should have looked at it more carefully. It was two cups. They were taped together, and the damage was under the tape. So I know this is, this is the way it was when I bought it. But we're going to talk about this again. This is a product called Orly Nail Rescue. It's designed to repair broken fingernails. So, very safe. And I'm going to use that to fill in this little chip because, as you will see when you see the pictures, there's a little chunk taken out of that. It's not major. It's not noticeable. Well, yes, it is. Okay, it's noticeable. If I can see it, it's noticeable. But I need to get that filled in. So I'm going to do this the same way I would repair a broken nail. Uh, the... Here, the Nail Rescue comes in two parts. It's a little bottle of acrylic and a powder. So this stuff, which I guess is a lot like super glue, I'm just going to paint over the little chip. Now, if this were my finger that I were doing it to, my fingernail, I would stick it right into this little pot of powder, but it's not. So what I'm going to do is take the powder and just sort of tap some of it out on top of this little chip that I've just painted with the, um, the glue. Now I'm doing this over a piece of paper, by the way, so that I don't end up wasting any of this stuff. It's not, I'm it's not a big danger because I've got a lot of this stuff and it's not like it's fantastically expensive. I get this at Sally Beauty Supply and I think it's something like seven dollars and change um, for a box like this. You can also get it on eBay and it's a wonderful little porcelain repair trick. So, I've got it in there. It's filled in the little chip. I'm just using my finger, by the way, to shape this. Um, now, I, I want to use my finger to shape it as closely as I can to the shape of the cup that it's filling. You know, so I want the shape of the little divot. And then when this dries, I'm just going to take um, an emery board or a little emery cloth and just sand it down a little until it's nice and even. And then we're going to take a look at painting this. And this, as you will see from the picture, has a very intricate little pattern on the edge. We are not even going to attempt to reproduce this little pattern on the edge. Not even close. So, we'll be back in a minute. I, I, we have to give this time a try. 
and we have to give our pink paint some time to dry. So when everything is dry, we will be back. We will finish this up. We will finish this. And we will finish this. So see you in a minute. Well, I'm back. Uh, everything's had a chance to dry. As you can see, I have company. He was very good earlier and let me paint without help. But a Q-tip came out, so he came out too. Now, let's start with this piece. Um, yeah, thank you. He's not going anywhere. He's just going to sit there. This should be fun. Now, this is where I did the little repair. And I have a little bit of emery paper. This, by the way, it comes in this box. Um, let's just see if we can get this stuff out without my... Yeah, there it is. Comes in the box. So it's not even like you have to go out of your way to get it. Uh, this will bend, as I pointed out in a previous video. So it'll get right in there into that little curve. And I'm just going to buff this down. In this case, I don't need to do a lot because when I was tamping it down with my finger, I made sure that it was pretty even with the surface. So this is just emery paper, just going to tamp it down a little. So let's just, there we go. Now let's take a little picture of this. All right, stay. There we go. Okay. Yes, I know you're back. So because this is on a very intricately painted border, I have to do something because right now, yeah. do you want the Q-tip? Is that it? You can have it if you want it. Okay, I'm through with it. All right. <laughs> okay, he's got the Q-tip. He's happy. This is very conspicuous because it's on this intricately painted border. And as I mentioned before, I am no artist. Consequently, I am not even going to try to reproduce that border. I've just got some paint and this is, what color are we? Um, raw Sienna. And these paints come in all kinds of colors. I usually stick with a standard palette uh, and just mix them as I go along to get the colors I want. In this case, all I'm going to do is paint a few little lines on this. And I'm not going to do it with raw sienna. That's definitely not the right color. So let's take a look at this. This is burnt sienna. And as I mentioned before, a lot of this is just trial and error. You just end up playing around until you find the color that will work best. And let's see if this one will do better. Nope, that's still a little too light. Burnt Sienna and Black. So I have a dollop of each and I'm going from one to the other until I get a color that's dark enough. And remember, this is a very teeny tiny little brush. And 
And all I'm doing with this is putting in a few lines just to get the color. Um, I'm not trying to duplicate the design or the pattern at all. I just want to get a color that doesn't stand out so it's not white. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to snap a quick picture of this. I'm going to set that aside. Now, we have this, which is the cup with the pink spot on it. Now, even though that pink paint has a nice little gloss to it, I watered it down a lot. And in watering it down, that also got rid of a lot of the gloss. So, clear nail polish comes with this own little brush, makes life very easy, and I'm just going to go right over that area. Now, once I do that, this is a quick dry, and for those of you who are not really familiar with nail polish, you don't, you know, do your nails a lot, uh, which I guess would include all of the men, it's a sort of oily liquid that you can put over wet nail polish that helps it dry quickly. What I'm using it for is to help smooth out that nail polish. Uh, I'm just painting it over, and it will allow me to blend the nail polish into the surrounding high-gloss glaze. Very easy. So, a little dab of clear nail polish on the painted area. Smooth it out. Yep. So, let's get a picture of this now. All right, stay. Come on. There we go. Now, the thing you're going to notice when you see these pieces in the close-up pictures is that I have not matched everything exactly. Um, I'm not even trying to. What I'm trying to do is get an overall blending of color, and this one I am probably going to lighten up a little. That looks a little dark to my eye. I'm just trying to get an overall blending of color so that it's no longer a conspicuous white spot. On this little piece, this was a little easier than the others, find that little chip. Ah, there you are. That one is so tiny, I'm not even going to bother to do anything with it. If I had to go around the plate twice to find it with my finger, it's not a problem. So all we're trying to do is make it less obvious. And as I said in the previous video, if I turn this over to Lisa and said, here Lisa, repaint that little patch. She's an artist. 
she can do it. I'm not an artist. I cannot do it. What I can do is disguise it. I can make sure that your eye is not drawn to that flaw. Um, if I point it out to you, of course you can see it. You'd probably be able to see it if you simply took the piece and, and handled it, but not when it's just sitting uh, on a table. It's not going to be obvious. So that's how we do it. And this one, yes, it's drying darker. Paint often dries darker. So fortunately, with something like this, I'm using water-based paints. I can take that paint off very easily. I can even take a wet brush and take off a little bit of the paint, as much of the paint as I want to. If this were oil-based paint, I would probably have to use acetone nail polish remover to do this. Uh, in this case, I don't. A little bit of water will do it. Uh, and I will snap a picture once I've taken off a little more of that paint. So today we've done three little pieces of broken porcelain. Uh, yesterday we did the moriage piece. And we'll see. I'm not sure if tomorrow we're going to do another project video. As I said before, the projects are backing up on me. So I need to start doing more project videos just to get them you know, out of the way so that we can go forward. Um, oh, very quickly. Someone has asked me about this and said, you know, are you doing promos for Starbucks? No, I'm annoyed with Starbucks. I'm doing promos for Red Sox. I'm annoyed with the Red Sox. All Red Sox fans are annoyed with the Red Sox. It's just, it's the normal emotional state for a Red Sox fan is annoyed, except in 2004. We were not annoyed with them then. But yeah, no, it's all about the Red Sox. And no, I'm not on the Red Sox payroll. They don't give me any money for this showing off their little logo. That's just between me and them, and it's been a lifelong love-hate relationship. So, very quickly, if you want to get in touch with me, and I have this in the video notes, comment on the videos. I read my comments. If they require answers, I will respond. So, that's how you get in touch with me. Meantime, have a great day. Uh, I don't know what it's like for you folks, but around here the weather's been actually pretty good this weekend. So stick around for tomorrow's video and we'll see you then. Have a great day.